Right. Now, from that um, update from Mombasa County, let's come back to the studio where we are talking about the visit by Theresa May. Um, of course, uh, she's reading the country and she'll be having a meeting with the president, Uhuru Kenyatta. But, uh, Professor Wajakwa, what, what are the main um, Britain investments that we're likely to see after this um, uh, talks between the two leaders? I think I'll leave that portion to be answered by my colleague who is very much versed in uh, development issues mm -hmm. uh, given the fact that he's been he's a scholar from Germany and the United States and he, he could be the person to answer that better <laughs> okay over to you dr. Right. Uh, yeah so maybe you want to repeat that again so that we uh, my question is what are yeah. the main areas of Brit Britain's investment yeah I think um, as an economy you know, we are agricultural in uh, uh, the, the greater part of our economy is agricultural. And then, of course, there are the areas of tourism and then the, there's the area of uh, manufacturing. So first and foremost, um, uh, anything that will link, uh, that will be on the agricultural processing or mm -hmm. manufacturing will be key in this, um, in this uh, during this visit mm -hmm. uh, in terms of signing that. But I think also very important is the fact that uh, we as Kenya, we now don't want to be marketing commodities to UK anymore, to Britain anymore. We want what we would call value addition on our products so that whatever we do, we have a strong manufacturing base here mm -hmm. and then we sell either finished products or semi-finished products instead of what we've been doing for the last se half a century that is selling you know our raw coffee our mm -hmm. raw tea our mm -hmm. raw um, whether it was um, beans you, you just talked about although those ones are taken fresh then so so that's 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 one area, and of course, I, I wouldn't want to forget uh, horticulture, which is yeah. UK is our biggest uh, market right now. UK, Germany, and, and Holland for the flowers. So those are very important areas, and this is tied a little bit to the status we gained just recently. That is of a middle-income economy, mm -hmm. which meant that certain uh, benefits we used to enjoy, e.g., through the economic partnership. Uh, um, agreement and the rest are no longer the way they were. So mm -hmm. Britain getting out of the European Union under Brexit, under the Brexit uh, model, what, what, what do we expect? And that's yeah. very, very key in this discussion. In as, fact, yeah. in fact, it was coming to that point yes. because by next year, yeah. British needs to get out of the EU. Right. And now it if, looks like the, the Britain is turning its shift to Africa. That is Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria being one of like the strongest the African, largest economies, yeah, yeah. largest economy in the yes, African correct. continent. Right. But why? Why now with the exiting EU? Couldn't they do that before exiting the EU? Very good question, Brenda. Um, before I say that, one of the things that we are not looking at, and uh, I've been on television, television in, uh, studio, and I've had a lot of psychophancy that all. Oh, uh, uh, who is going to America is going to bring us this, bring us this, and then the Prime Minister of Britain is coming in this country. Oh, we need aid. We should move away from dependency theory. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, mm -hmm. the British forces in this country need to pack and go. Let the President ask her to make arrangements within six months and remove these forces. We, they have been here for over 50 years. We have been independent for over, within that uh, bracket. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to uh, uh, keep the British forces in, in Kenya, for example. If you go to countries like uh, Botswana and what have you, you find out that those agreements were superseded and they had to go. We have a confidence in our men in KDF, men and women in KDF, who can take charge of this country rather than having this notion that because we have British forces in Kenya, they are much more a superior force. Yet we have not seen them fighting in Somalia. We have not seen them representing this country. They should go. Number two, number two, the president, and I'm deviating from the question you asked because I wanted to go straight away to what I wanted before we come to that. Mm -hmm. The president should ask the British government to compensate Kenyans for the atrocities that were, commit, that were committed during colonial, colonial times by writing off the debts that we owe the British. Number three, the, the, the president should also ask the prime minister to actually regulate Kenyans who are illegal in Britain today. There are so many Kenyans in Britain who have, in one way or the other, 
uh, overstayed and due to circumstances they cannot come back when their loved ones have passed or even to visit their own country. Mm -hmm. Nigeria did that concession under Abacha and it's high time that the president also took that route. Mm -hmm. Now what do we benefit from all this? Do we benefit or do we leave them to come and trade with us so that we can actually look into what we what the value addition are to our investment? Should we come in and say that they are coming to help us or can we negotiate on the same level in give and take the way the Nigerian government has been doing? Mm -hmm. Come in, let us negotiate. How much taxes are you going to pay? How much rebate are we going to give us? What kind of job creations are you going to, are you going to create? And what is the viability mm -hmm. and uh, the standards that have to be conducive for you to come and invest? The president should also assure the British government mm -hmm. that he's going to look into the visa issues, mm -hmm. the work permit issues, the red tape that are within the immigration, mm -hmm. because the Kenyan immigration system is still very poor, very backward, and uh, it, 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 when it comes to investment, investors are really willing investors who come in this country are like, now how do we start? Mm -hmm. The corruption in Nyayo House has to go to go. Mm -hmm. Museveni has come up with a policy which is very conducive to investors. They come in, invest and get work permit within a certain period. Mm -hmm. And Tiangi has come up with some kind of ludicrous mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> The 60 day ultimatum. Leave alone that. That mm -hmm. now investors should, will apply for work permits from their, country. their countries. And that is killing our economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for you, uh, it takes me back to the same question I'd asked you. For you, um, is it the right time for Britain now to continue strengthening its trade relations with the Afri African countries? No, not, because they should have, because I'm just thinking they should have done that even before the, the EU exit. Not at all. I mean, I, the British have two colors. They'll smile with you and then smear you. When Uhuru was down there, when Uhuru had been re-elected, there was an issue. We remember what the British High Commission in Kenya told the president. He said that he was going to, the, the British were not going to support the, the, the president because of what had gone on at that particular time. And that's why the president shifted to the east. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the investment that has come in and the discovery of oil mm -hmm. in Kenya has really made our economy to, to start growing. Okay. Now, the Brits, instead of coming in at that particular time, they looked at Kenya as a pariah state. Mm -hmm. They even told their citizens not to come in to add a value addition to our economy in terms of tourism mm -hmm. because they look like, they look like oh, this is no-go area. But because now they have existed, mm -hmm. they're existing, the, the, the EU, they're, they're, they are now coming out looking for new partners. And of mm -hmm. course, they know that Kenya is at the core of national or international security, okay. given the proximity with the Middle East mm -hmm. and the proximity in, in Africa. So even if they are coming now, let them come in at our cost. Let them come, come in at the president's stamp, Kenyan stamp. They should not just come in and now start hoodwinking us mm -hmm. as they used to do before. Okay. They should pick up their troops at, from this country. They should also come in and say, look, mm -hmm. we did so wrong to you people. Let us either reparate or okay. give Kenyans who are in the UK status to say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Such strong sentiments from you, Professor Wajak, um, Wajakoya. Dr. Kambona, yes. do you agree with what he is saying? I think I want to just answer that with respect to what your question was. You're asking wh why didn't they do that before, before exit? Ex yeah, because they're supposed and to exit yes. the EU next year. And, and that's, of course, it chimes with what Professor is saying in the sense that yes, th th there has been this lax that, oh, Kenya, third world country, we will. And then China comes and gets all these opportunities in the time that they were not engaging us as much. Then there is, oh, let's play catch up now. Mm -hmm. So, yes, like Prof says, and, and your question is, yeah, there, then there's now that catch up, uh, there's playing some catch up game right now. Mm -hmm. Because in only one week, we have had the Western powers, the mm -hmm. three most important ones Germany, the, uh, the, the US. The, uh, yeah, Germany is in Africa right now mm -hmm. through its Merkel, Angela Merkel. The, the big uh, uh, Teresa is here. And in, and in the other t uh, two African countries. And so uh, Uhuru Kenyatta was invited to the White House to meet Trump. So the issue is, and that comes back to you again, your question. The issue is, yes, they have played, 
they have this African, the dark continent thing went a little too far. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, oh, there are some people who could take advantage of this opportunity. And they came, and then you're now trying to play So catch it's up. like Kenya going to the East has caused a lot of ripples to mm -hmm. these Western countries. Yes, and they want to yes. catch up. Yes, yes. Because look at the big contracts. You know, if for the last five, six years we've been, get, we've been giving big contracts to non-Western countries, mm -hmm. you know you're going to miss out in the next coming... 10 years okay. because then the, those other guys will be entrenched. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Brexit is a wake up call for Britain. I agree with you in that question. That it's not like that you're going to play this game alone. And maybe things could change again if another government comes. I don't know. But mm -hmm. you're going to be in this thing alone. It's no longer the, e the EU was a, an umbrella organization. So, they, all the EU countries more or less felt, yeah, we are in Kenya. The Germans felt, the Italians felt. But now if Britain is going to play it alone under Brexit, then mm -hmm. it's like you better be there. Uh, and so the 30-year lapse mm -hmm. in not coming to Kenya is, is a wake-up call that, hey, mm -hmm. we, are, we are missing out. Okay, and gentlemen, yeah. before we take a commercial break in a few minutes, um, now that they're trying to catch up, with, with the African continent because of the East relations with Kenya. Right. How is it going to be for them? Is it going to be an easy walk in the park or it will take some time? First of all, uh, Theresa May is on record for burning hat, Mira, a, a, a commodity that Kenyans have used for a very long time to develop their economy. And when I was doing my own research, I found out that she banned Mira against the will of the drug advisory council in mm -hmm. Britain. Mm -hmm. They say that even though there were some kind of ingredients that were causing cancer, but in comparative to nicotine, mm -hmm. Mira was less uh, killer to cancer than nicotine. So if they want to come in now, this is the opportunity of the president telling them, look, lift this ban because your own council advised you against it. And number yeah. two, if you don't ban, if you don't lift the ban, then let us tell your tobacco company, Morris, is it Morris? Morris uh, yeah, yeah, let them pack and go. Mm -hmm. Because cigarettes are equally uh, a big killer of, of cancer. Let's take advantage of this now. And okay. if I was the Minister for Foreign Affairs, I would tell the President, mm -hmm. let's take advantage of the situation and impose our terms of engagement okay. so that they can come to terms with us okay. rather than being the basket of dependency mm -hmm. and kissing and telling like it has been before or oh, anything that comes from Britain is good mm -hmm. and every week that we were in courts are good no, no, no. Let us actually stand as a nation. Okay, okay. Now, the sentiments by uh, Professor Wajakwaya takes us to our second commercial break. We shall be coming back with, uh, we shall continue this discussion after the short break. But right now, I'd like to leave you with the live shots of uh, what now Mombasa County when it comes to that demonstration of disappearance of young youngsters in Mombasa County. Remember, this demonstration is being led by Haki Yetu Africa. Uh, uh,